Hey booktube, what's up? My name is Juan, I am Just One Reader, and this is the last episode in my series rereading Harry Potter as an adult. It's really um, a weird feeling. <laughs> it's a really weird experience to be here and to be able to say that I have reread the Harry Potter series, which is my favorite series, at least my favorite series from my childhood, and um, I will post a separate video later on, maybe in, in a week or so, talking about the entire series as a whole and how my overall impressions have changed um, as an adult compared to how I felt about these books when I was a child growing up. Uh, because these are books that I reread many, many times over as I was a teenager, you know, from the age of six or seven until now so it it there there certainly have been some changes and some development in my views on harry potter um so today i wanted to talk very 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 briefly about harry potter and the deathly hallows which is the last book in the series and this is the one that i have to review now it's kind of difficult for me to review this book it's difficult to review any of these books, actually, because I remember, with this one especially, I really remember reading it for the first time and how I felt when I was reading it for the first time. And just the sheer suspense and the thrill and the mystery that drives the narrative is incredible. There's a sense of tension in this book specifically, Everything feels very urgent, and I really liked that urgency. Um, however, I do have to say, it's very different reading this for the sixth or seventh time now as an adult, now that I know what's going to happen. Um, it's different because that sense of tension is there, but I don't feel the need to know more. And I remember when I re read this the first time, I could not stop reading because I just needed to know. And of course, in a reread, that is lost, absolutely. It's not completely lost, but it's not as enjoyable as the first time, for sure. Um, needless to say, this was a great book. I gave it four stars. And I overall really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot more than Half-Blood Prince. Um, Half-Blood Prince, in my opinion, just did not really hold up uh, in a reread. There was just some things in Half-Blood Prince that I was not particularly thrilled by or that I didn't enjoy in terms of the writing or the character development or um, whatever. Whereas... Deathly Hallows was a very different experience. I definitely enjoyed this one a lot more. I think that the pacing of this book is really good. I know that a lot of people think that this book is quite slow paced or that it drags or that it has some parts that are just very frustrating because it feels like the characters are not doing anything, which is what you should feel because that's what the characters are feeling. But I completely disagree. I thought the pacing of this book was one of the best things that this book had. I, I really liked the, the, the combination between these really intimate moments with Harry, with Harry and Ron and Hermione, um, and the, the, you know, that and the juxtaposition with the really big wizarding war that is happening uh, as a backdrop. And something that I was thinking was it's really frustrating to have this entire series build up this war and we are expecting to see the war and to see everything that's going on and it's kind of frustrating that in the last book we don't really see a lot of the war we just see the parts where Harry, Ron, and Hermione are involved, but we don't see the rest. We don't see the spectacle of war. We don't see the big battles. Even the Battle of Hogwarts, we don't really see it. We see bits and, 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 and fragments here and there. We see sort of figments of it, but we don't really see the big wizarding war picture. We don't see that. 
And I think it's really frustrating because there's a lot of build-up in the series for that. However, I think it makes sense because this is really Harry's story and this story, this particular story, Deadly Hallows, feels like very personal, very intimate. Uh, so I was frustrated by not seeing the big spectacle of everything, but at the same time I thought it was a really nice touch to just be able to catch a glimpse of that thing and experience everything from Harry's point of view. Now, I will say, there are some mixed feelings that I have about this book. There were some bits that I really loved, and there were some bits that I was kind of really disappointed by. Um, I think there are some deaths in the book that are really beautifully written, like Dobby's death, I think is really good. Um, Snape's death, I think, was really good. Most of them were really good. Even Tonks and Lupin, I think, were killed in a, in a pretty beautiful way because they were not... We didn't see them die. We just saw the, the, the bodies lying there in a split second. It was, like, almost too quick. But I like that. However, there was one piece of writing in particular that really bugged me, and I'm going to share it with you. And this is one of the most tragic deaths, which is Fred Weasley's death. Um, I just, I don't like how this sounds in my head. And when I was reading it, I thought I was reading something very, uh, ve like very cliched writing. There's just a lot of the same conjunction and. So this is it. No, 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 someone was shouting. No, Fred, no. And Percy was shaking his brother, and Ron was kneeling beside them, and Fred's eyes stared without seeing, the ghost of his last laugh still etched upon his face. I just I, I just found some fragments of the writing in this novel to be a little bit choppy and a little bit cliche, and some of them I didn't love them. However, I do think that there is a particular chapter in this book that was, in my opinion, just amazing and by far the best chapter of this book, which was um, The Forest Again. It's chapter... Chapter 34, The Forest Again. This is, in my opinion, hands down, the best chapter, the best written, the most intimate, the most personal feeling type of chapter in the entire book. Um, this is the part where Harry is walking towards death. And I remember I saw an interview with J.K. Rowling and she was talking about writing that chapter and how she was destroyed. She was, you know, she was, I think she was drunk. Or I, I think she said that. Don't, I mean, don't tell, don't tell anyone that I told you that. But I think I heard in an interview that she was drunk and sobbing and bawling her eyes out. She was devastated after having spent so many years, such a long time with these characters, and sh writing this scene is just... <sighs> and I could feel it. I mean, that's why I thought this chapter was the single best chapter in this book. It was so personal, and you could really feel that the author was putting a lot of care, love, and suffering into every sentence. So I really love that, and that was the most touching part. That was the most evocative and heartfelt part of the book, of the entire book, um, and maybe of the series. This part where Harry meets the ghosts, presences of um, James, Lily, Sirius, and Lupin, that part is probably the closest I was to crying, and I think it's the best part of the book. Um, at least in, in this reread, that was my favorite part. That was the most personal and the most heart-wrenching and the most devastating. Um, now, before I wrap this up, the ending. I don't like the ending to this book. I mean, I like how everything wraps up. I agree that that's the way that it should be done. Some people say that Harry should have died. I think, I think maybe I would be okay if Harry had died. I am also okay with him having survived. I am. I, I think both ways could have worked, depending on how it was handled. I understand J.K. Rowling's reasons for keeping him alive. She says that 
for her, the most courageous and hardest thing to do in war is not fighting necessarily, but fighting and then coming back and rebuilding a family and rebuilding a life. And that's what she wanted for Harry. She wanted to be able to do that. And that's why at the end, she didn't kill him off. Um, which is good because she did kill pretty much everybody else off. Imagine if she had killed Mr. Weasley. I think she wanted to kill Mr. Weasley, but then she didn't. Uh, which would have been devastating, but uh, okay. So um, I am okay with the ending. I really enjoy everything. And if, if you compare Voldemort's death, that final round with Voldemort, if you compare that with the movie, the movie is maybe more spectacular, but the book is just, it's an amazing scene how Voldemort dies in the book. It's so different. It makes sense. It just feels real. It's not as huge and movie gimmicky as it is in the movie but in the book it's just perfect i really liked that um however there's just not enough i mean voldemort is killed and then like two pages afterwards the book stops and that's it um i just felt like we needed five more chapters of closure conclusion denouement knowing what happened with this world and really finishing off the book in a, the way that it should have. Much like Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire has this amazing climax, and then we have like three more chapters of conclusion, and everything feels right. Uh, also in Order of the Phoenix, and even Half-Blood Prince. But this one, everything finishes, and then it's like, what's going on? And then we have the epilogue. I don't really want to talk a lot about the epilogue, because I think that's kind of a very personal taste kind of thing. It's very personal whether you love it or you hate it. I don't necessarily hate it or love it. I just think it was unnecessary. And particularly now that we know that Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, the script, is an actual thing in the real world. Considering that, this epilogue was dangerous. I'm just going to say that. I don't think it was necessary. I think it was not really perfect to give that much information to the readers. We didn't really need that. I would have much preferred um, more conclusion of this story and not open the big can of worms that that epilogue did open. So my conclusion is I did enjoy it. I liked it. There are some problems that I have with this book in writing and in narrate uh, the, the, this, the actual story. Um, but I, I, I enjoyed it more than others, definitely. So um, I gave it four stars. Now, the next video that I make is going to be a wrap up for the entire series. And in that video, I will also rank the Harry Potter books according to this reread. So this is just gonna be in my reread this time around, but I will tell you what is my new favorite and what is my new least favorite. Thanks for watching.